Okay, let's solve this system, non-quadratic system of four equations with three unknowns. It's non-quadratic, so we're going to use Gaussian elimination. And here we'll use Gauss-Jordan method with pivoting. We start by creating an augmented matrix, which is the matrix of coefficients. X is in the first column, Y is in the second, Z is in the third. Then the vertical line, which plays the part of equality signs and the right-hand side of the system, the so-called free coefficients. Now our goal here is to create a um, matrix in uh, row-reduced echelon form, but really a matrix with as many pivot columns as possible. The number of pivot columns has to equal the number of non-zero rows, then we will know that our elimination is over, so solving the system is over, we can read the solution. Now the uh, Gauss-Jordan method with pivoting allows us to choose our pivots as we please. So you look at these, um, you look at the matrix and from the practical standpoint you want to choose first your pivot in a column that already has as many zeros as possible because that means you got your work will be simpler and quicker and you probably want to choose a 1 as your pivot because that saves you the trouble of actually dividing the entire row by whatever number to create that one. So let's pick this element here. There's a bunch of ones here, but let's use this one because there's already zero in that column. Now all I have to do is to eliminate all the remaining entries that are non-zero in that pivot column, which means these twos above it. The, uh, the zero below it is already eliminated, so to speak. So that means two similar operations. From row 1 I have to subtract 2 times row 3 and from row 2 same thing 2 times row 3. That way these twos will become zeros. The third row doesn't change so I'll start with copying that row same with the fourth and the first and second change. So we have R1 minus 2, R3. So we have 1 by 1. 2 minus 2 times 3, that's negative 4. 1 minus 6, that's negative 5. 2 minus 2, that's 0. 3 minus 2 times negative 2, that's 3 plus 4, that's 7. Similarly here. 3 minus 2 times 3, that's negative 3. 1 minus 2 times 3, which is negative 5. 2 minus 2 is 0, of course, and 5 plus 4 is a 9. Now we have a pivot column. Our third column is a pivot column, so the next step is to make a 1, the first or the second column, into that pivot column. Um, the choice is arbitrary, but now, of course, you have to be careful, right? The choice is arbitrary, but not uh, entirely. Because if you were, for instance, to choose this 3, for whatever reason, as your next pivot, see what would happen when you try to eliminate the negative 3 right here. You would make it into a 0, but at the same time, you would just destroy the 0 that was created in the first step. So, to avoid that uh, destruction, that possible destruction of your previous prior work, what uh, you want to do, what you should do, is simply cover the row in which um, you already have a pivot, because you should have only one pivot per row. So, I'm going to cover the third row here, and then you choose the um, next pivot from the remaining non-zero, of course, entries. There's a 1 uh, in the bottom in the first and second columns, so I'm going to choose this one from my next pivot. And now you eliminate in one step everything else in that column. So, one by one, uh, from the top. To get rid of the negative 3, which is in R1, we have to add 3 times 1, which is in R4. To get rid of the negative 4 in row 2, we have to add 
4 times 1, which is 4 times R4. And to eliminate 3, we have to subtract 3 times 1, which is R4. The last row doesn't change. And here we have to just subtract, do the arithmetic. First row, minus 3 plus 3 is of course 0, minus 5 plus 3, 0 plus 0, neg 9 minus 3 should be 6. Second row, minus 4 plus 4 for 0, minus 5 plus 4 minus 1, 0 plus 0, 7 minus 4, that's 3. And the third row, 3 minus 3 is going to be, of course, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. 1 minus 0, 0, 1. And negative 2 plus 3 gives us a 1. Okay, we have first column is a pivot column, second, a third is a pivot column. I have a pivot in the third row, cover it a pivot in the fourth row, cover it, and so the remaining possible pivots are in the second column, of course, either this one or this one. I'm going to choose the negative one. And two operations, because you have two non-zero entries remaining in that column. In the first row, the negative two, so you have to subtract twice row two to get rid of it. And in the fourth row, simply a 1, so you just add R2 and you're going to get a 0 right there. Now, the th second row is going to have a negative 1 as a pivot, so I'm going to uh, multiply it by a negative 1 to make it a nice 1 right there. Okay, the first row is going to be full of zeros clearly. The third row won't change. The last row we're adding, we have 1, 0, 0 and a 2. And the second row at the last step multiply by negative 1. Okay, now I have three pivots, three pivot columns, three non-zero rows, which means my job is done. In addition, I have three uh, variables, three unknowns, which means I have exactly one solution. And all I have to do right now is just change the augmented matrix into a system of equations, just like in the first step we took the system, changed it into augmented, ma augmented matrix. Now read the coefficients, put the variables back in, change the vertical line into equal signs, and there you go. So from the second row we have just 0x, 1y, 0z equals negative 3. Third row 0x, 0y, 1z equal 1. And fourth row 1x, 0y, 0z equals 2. And we have exactly one solution.